is accomplished. I said, can you imagine a man in the desert giving you such an answer? You don't have to reason, no deduction. In the whole Bible you can't find an answer like that. So he said, you see, this is exactly what Jesus said before he parted in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Meaning you haven't the capacity, you have not the capacity. I've got solution to all your problems, to doomsday. You know, he could have given us. He said, for this, surplus women, what you do? For drunkenness, what you do? For suicide, what you do? You know, for racial problem, what you do? He could have given us all, how to solve all the problems. But the people to whom he was addressing, they were not fit to receive it. So he's telling them, his disciples, as we read in the Holy Scriptures, in the New Testament, Jesus is telling his disciples again and again, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, how many times? Dozens of times. Then he explains to them as it is explained to little children. And yet they can't understand. So he said, I even yet without understanding, even yet? Look, how am I explaining to you? They're talking to little children and you still can't understand what I'm talking about. And when he's provoked further, he says, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? If he was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed that honorable harakiri, suicide. <laughs> but he couldn't do that. You know, his people. Endless trouble. Everything that he spoke, they misunderstood. Everything. Without exception. What? John chapter 13. The ending verses. Jesus tells his disciples, he says, in my Father's house there are many mansions. I am going to prepare a place for you. Had it not been so, I would have told you. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. In other words, I assume that you know where I am going, and you know how to get there. I am going to prepare a place for you, spiritually, in heaven. I am going to prepare a place for you. And where I am going, you know where I am going, and you know how to get there. So they say, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? All right. I'm quoting correctly. That's what they said. In other words, Jesus is talking about spiritual matters. They are thinking of geographical location. Mm -hmm. Like Bloemfontein, Kimberley, Johannesburg. We don't know where you're going, and how do you know how to get there? Yeah. This, is, look, this is the, the whole dialogue taking place there. Mm. So he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In other words, the way to God are personified in me. Look at me. Truth is personified in me. Look at me. Real life is personified in me. Look at me. The way I am going, you go, you will reach there. So, they still, it's too heavy for them. You know, like the Zulu says, it's too heavy. You know what they're talking about. It's too heavy, you know, it's too heavy to burden stuff. So this says, Lord, show us the Father and it suffices at us. You know, all this fancy talk, all this you're talking about. I am the way, the truth and the life, and going and preparing place in heaven and mansions in the skies. So said, look, we don't know what you're talking about. Just show us God and that will be sufficient for us. You know, we'll be satisfied. All this you're talking is too much for us. It's too heavy for us. So just show us God. Philip said that. He wanted to see God with his bodily eyes. So Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. Why askest thou, show us the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. They misunderstood, misunderstood again. Now they say he's the Father. But look, you believe that he's the Son. Jesus is not the Father. He is the Son. Now the Christians say he's the Father. His own Father? How can he be his own Father? No, what he's saying is that if you have seen me, there is no defect in Philip's eyes. A man who can heal the blind, other people's blindness, his own disciple Philip, can't he rectify his defect? He can, but no. This is not physical defect. If you have seen me, meaning if you understood me, you would have understood what God is. Like Jesus said, seeing, they see not. Hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. This is not physical seeing, and this is not physical hearing. Seeing they see not. What does it mean? You see and you don't see. It means you could have come to the office, 
you know, looking for the head of the propagation center. And somehow you chatted with this young man, he gave you some literature and you went away. You were looking for me. Next time we meet here, he says, you know, I was looking for Mr. D. Dad. I said, that's me. He said, well, you were sitting there. I said, yes. So you were seeing me and you didn't see me. Means you didn't recognize me. Hearing they hear not. Means the man of God is telling you what is right and what is wrong, what you must do, what you must not do. And yet you're not hearkening to that message. That means you don't hear. You're not hearing. Not that you are deaf. That doesn't mean that they are deaf. See, you're not deaf. But suppose that while I'm talking to you, you're hitting everything for a sixer in your mind. Ah, rubbish, rubbish. You know, well, since my hubby is getting the job, I must be sure a nice smiling face, you know, I must keep on nodding my head. That means you're not listening. See? You're just pretending that you are listening. That means you are hearing and you're not hearing. The sound is going to ears, but you're not written, you're not listening to anything at all. It's just that you are acting. So that is what Jesus says. Seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So the, this thing. Philip, he's seeing Jesus as Jesus, you know, as the Messiah. But he doesn't know the real situation, the position, status of the man. If he understood what a Messiah was, what a messenger of God was, then he would have understood what God was. And you as a Jew, who oh, Philip, says, Philip, you have to know better than that. You know, we are told, it's the belief of the Jews, that no man can see God and live. God is not seen at any time. Any time, whatever you see, is not God. God is not seen at any time. In that case, when you are programmed with that from childhood, that God is not seen at any time, no man can see God and live, how can you make such a silly request that you want to see God with your bodily eyes? So, but misunderstanding, continuous misunderstanding. The disciples misunderstood, and his followers today are misunderstanding. He said, look, Jesus went to be God. So where? He said, he and my father are one. It's a continuous misunderstanding. So, when we point it out, amazing thing happens. I'm talking about the learned man. Yeah. When I show him these things, he's stunned. He's really stunned. So, you, know, you can't help agreeing with me. It makes sense. What I'm telling you is making sense. So he said, well, that's your interpretation. I said, right. I said, give me yours. If this is my interpretation, no. you give me yours. Yeah, you okay. Your you haven't got it. <laughs> no, not necessary. No. Our child is only first year yeah. at Bible school. But the DD hasn't got it. Believe me, the doctor of divinity is utterly helpless. Because you are programmed from childhood into seeing a certain angle which is not there. For example, I have just stumbled across. You know, I keep on stumbling across because if you are in the field, anything, all these things that she's been telling me about this and that and you know, uh, so many millimeters now. Uh, what for? Because he's in the field. You know, he can say, look, we can take a little extra advantage over this mm. and it won't cost you anything extra, but I'll give you the maximum that I can. Right. If he didn't tell me that, he still would have got the job. But now, how does he know all this? He's in the field. So when you're in the field, you make discoveries. So, I didn't like this for the poor for almost all my life. It's only a month or two now, I start liking it. St. Paul. You know, St. Paul wrote, wrote more than 50% of the books of the New Testament. Out of the 27 books, 14 are written by Paul. More than 50% written by one man. And my experience with Paul was always giving me a bad taste in the mouth. See, when I speak to a Christian, like I'm speaking to you as Christians, I said, you see, Jesus said, think not that I am coming to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, heaven and earth shall 